best entertainment on the earth. Tune in for Comics with Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, I've, I've talked about that. I've gotten this question before um, from good people, you know, do comic writer or do, you know, do the, does the race, the gender, whatever it happens to be, sexuality of the comic creative team need to match the character that is in the comic? And my answer is, is a very hard no. I think that's harmful. I think it's net harmful to the book. I don't think that uh, benefits anyone. And I think that it's it's one of these traps that's going on in comics that almost ensures that comics will not be diverse. They may say, well, wait a minute, that, hang on, what that take is confusing to me. Well, you know, right now there's a lot of companies talking about diversity and inclusion. They have various uh, efforts going on there. And I saw, uh, uh, you know, kind of a statement from one company about how they're handling diversity and inclusion. And it was, it, it got me thinking because I think that that company had it right. And it was, uh, you know, diversity is very important to the company. It's basically a statement. Uh, we want to hire people with diverse uh, backgrounds, races, genders, uh, religious opinions, and thoughts. Okay. So they want, first of all, that was kind of what perked my ears up a little bit, because in many cases, um, the word thoughts doesn't appear. So that was, a, that was an interesting addition there. Okay. So diversity. So we do this because we want a well-rounded, complex set of products that look at all views. That is what makes us stronger. Okay, that makes sense too. I, I think that if you are doing, if, I've I've often gone, uh, I've, I've talked to people, and we've had this conversation around diversity, and I've asked the question, you know, why why do diversity? And I often get I get lots of different answers, but there's kind of two answers that that kind of rise to the surface. And I, the first is, you know, because different, because diversity gives us stronger products because we get more points of view. That's answer number one. That's a pretty good answer. Answer number two is because that's more fair. And in my mind, that's a bad answer because that's an answer that indicates you don't really need, you don't, you don't know what to do with the diversity once you have it. So this company kind of continues and says, uh, however, we will not engage diversity at the cost of skill. Now, that's a, a, a statement that feels like one that can get you know attacked on uh, late night cable news or wherever it happens to be. But basically what it's saying there is we want diversity and we're assuming that you know by grabbing people from all walks of life and you know races and backgrounds, et cetera, we're assuming that we can recruit top talent still checking all those boxes, still still going to those different groups, we believe we can still get top people. If we can't get top people, there's no point in checking the box. If we're going to get somebody who cannot do the job, then we're setting somebody up to fail. And I would agree with that. I think, uh, look, I, there's, at this point, um, it's not like there's, uh, you know, you, you want to have somebody from, Oh, I don't know, from uh, Portugal in your, your company. You want somebody with that background. But as it turns out, there's only one person that graduated college in Portugal. Only one person. And so all the companies have to fight over that one person. No, of course not. There's a, a large group of people. But if you're recruiting your this position in, say, Nebraska, your odds of uh, you know, finding a highly skilled person from Portugal are probably harder than if you are recruiting in, say, Portugal <laughs> or, or a neighboring country. And, and so, you know, you have to be smart about how you're doing it. You, and, but if, but if you are trying to get talent and you consistently find that your company cannot recruit talent that is well-skilled, trained, you know, has a lot of, of, of the skills you need, I think you do have to start looking at the company and saying, I think we're doing something wrong because we're not attracting top talent. Regardless of, of any of the diversity aspects, we're not attracting top talent. I think we have a different problem here. We probably should solve that before we start to tackle the diversity aspect because we do need top talent here. Now, maybe that means we need to go train people in the field if you have something that's highly specialized. But if we're talking about comics, no, there's, there's writers everywhere. Every race, every religion, every gender, every sexuality, every location, as I say, every uh, you know, type of thought. There are writers out there. They exist. 
It is, it, there is not a shortage of writers based on background. I, there, there's not. Same, it's largely the same thing with artists. There are plenty of artists out there. So the question be, should become, are we recruiting the best talent? So what is your, you know, and that's why I was interested in this company. It's, it's the only way inclusion works is if we hire and retain top talent and then we promote the idea of the diversity aspect of our company working together. That last sentence is a little clumsy, but what it's meaning is the only way we actually make diversity inclusion work is if we put recruit top talent at the top of that list. We want the very best people. If we get the very best people and we focus, you know, start there, then the diversity, uh, the uh, people that we hire, are going to you know, succeed. They're going to, the, the, our odds of being successful are much higher because we're, we're starting with talent. I think, uh, and I know uh, there's, unfortunately, because this entire topic has been politicized and, and people are, you know, it, it's a trigger word for a lot of people, um, it, people, it, it's, it's often looked at in the wrong way and we get hung up on, you know, quotas and, and things like that. And we also get hung up on things that you see in comic books right now, which is to say, all right, we're going to put out a, you know, indigenous character. So we sure as hell better have, you know, an indigenous uh, writer, uh, a, a indigenous um, artist. We got to got to fill the team up that way somehow. Or are we doing a, uh, you know, a, a queer uh, African American character? Okay, well we're going to need to find a queer African American writer and artist. Otherwise, we're going to be called racist. Um, that's a that's a major mistake on multiple fronts. The other, the part that I said was clumsy in that company's statement, um, but I think interesting is to say, all right, once we've gotten the diversity, once we've gotten this, uh, this mix of different ideas, different talents in the company, uh, we need to now mix them up. We need to get them working across different things. The entire, the point of diversity, the point of different thought was that we get to see a different aspect of whatever the topic is. So in a comic contest, a context, if we have an African-American character, if we truly want to get new out-of-the-box ideas, new concepts, then what we need to do is have the African-American writer, this very skilled African-American writer, we need to have them writing the white character. We need to have the, you know, uh, Hispanic writer writing the Asian character. We need to have the Asian writer writing the black character, we have the white character writing the Hispanic character. I mean, we just need that we need to mix the people up. The, the goal of diversity and inclusion is that you bring in diverse, underlining diverse thoughts, and you get them to work on diverse things. And this flies in the face of, in my mind, the poison pill that got all this rolling, which is to say, well, the characters need to be authentic, we, they need to speak to their truth. Therefore, um, what we need to do is have these, uh, we, you know, if, if we're writing a indigenous character, we have to have an indigenous creative team. Otherwise we are, you know, it's, it's not authentic. It's not accurate. We're, you know, culturally appropriating the comic somehow because a white person is guessing at what the life of an indigenous person might be, but that's absurd. The writer is also guessing at what you know, the silver surfers life is like in the other side of the cosmos. They're, they're guessing at all. I mean, when you're talking superhero comics, it's all a guess. There are not actually superheroes. There's not somebody who's been bitten by a radioactive spider. There's not somebody who's jettisoned off his planet as a child. There may be somebody out there whose parents were killed and they dress up like a bat, but that person is going to go to the loony bin, not actually fight crime. So all of this is fantasy. So to suddenly draw the line and say, yeah, but the, the, you know, the, the gender, the race of the main character in this complete fantasy book is specific, and therefore we can only have this type of writer, this type of artist on that book, that's the opposite of diversity. That's less diversity. I don't want just the white guys writing the white guy character. Okay, if it's Fantastic Four... I do not want, uh, I, the default answer should not be, hey, let's put the white creative team on the Fantastic Four because they're all white. But you need, one of the creative team needs to be a little Jewish because Ben Grimm is, is Jewish. So, you know, and, and you got to do that. But otherwise, 
No, that, that doesn't make any sense. None of that makes any sense. And, you, and you, know, you may wind up, by the way, with a white writer or, or a white creative team. You may wind up, you're doing a cyborg book with a black writer. You may wind up with that because that's the best person to do the job because that's where the skill lies. But again, that's why you preference the talent. That's why you preference the skill above all else. That's where you begin. But if you're going to have a program of diversity and inclusion, you got to take it that extra step and that you do need to cross-pollinate your diversity. You need to mix it up a little bit. Otherwise, you're not actually doing what you said you were going to do. The inclusion part of we're going to include people from diverse areas into new fields to get a better result, that inclusion statement infers that you're going to try and mix people in. Uh, this is, uh, it's, it's a weirdly broken system. It's like somebody read the idea and then just stayed with the first part of the, of the, of the sentence. Like, okay, we need diversity. If we need diversity, then definitely we've got to keep the, the black people, the black people, the, the queer people, the queer people. We got to, you know, but it's like, did you, but wait a minute, you said you wanted diversity. That's not diversity. That's, that's the, the challenge that we have here. And, and, it feels to me like companies are, are a bit starting to wake up to that. Um, I think that it, they, they kind of have to if they want to be successful with this. I, I mean, the, the uh, it's going to take a few more years, but it's remarkable how many of the tolerance programs, how many of the diversity programs are a weird backdoor into segregation rather than actually inclusion. The second you start saying we got to keep these groups with these groups, and uh, the only way to be authentic, that's that's the path to madness. It doesn't work. But uh, but anyway, uh, it was, it was food for thought. Let me know where I've gone wrong. I'm sure many of you will. <laughs> and thanks for listening.